So I'm going to talk about uh, navigating the digital landscape, uh, transforming healthcare data with an internet, internet developer platform. OK, so about me, my name is Brito Arul. I'm, I'm heading the interoperability engineering team from Z Omega. So I have 25 years of experience in healthcare information technology. So I have been part of healthcare digital transformation journey since uh, the US healthcare started uh, paper from electronic. So about Z Omega, so it's founded in 2001, uh, headquarters in Frisco, Texas, USA. So we have a platform called Jiva. Uh, it's a population health management platform. So meaning, uh, so population health management uh, provide uh, three things, uh, better care, better health, better cost. So for example, if you are a member in the United States and um, you have a benefit and coverage from the health insurance company, so this population health management helps to the member to take care of this uh, better cost, better health, and better care for your coverage, and how it is being utilized. And based on their utilization management, so there is outcome of care management. And that's a key feature of our product. And also we have a data aggregation and analytics, and also we have a <clears throat> patient engagement. And technology-wise, we are completely open source uh, Python and uh, SQL Server and SOAPI. And uh, we've been uh, using uh, WSO2 uh, since maybe 10 years uh, when we, we started ESP and uh, API Manager. And uh, recently, we are the uh, one uh, adopting the WSO2 Korea platform. So Health Unit is a, our interoperability platform. So we call it as a, the platform is a Health Unity. Uh, it provides the integration, interoperability uh, between the uh, payer and provider. And, and we align with the industry, and uh, we also participate on the, the HL7 Devon C project. And also, we integrate with multiple industry standards. So the topic today is uh, how this, uh, the digital landscape is uh, transforming and helping healthcare data, <clears throat> and how the internal developer platform is helping the, the client and customer and developer community to exchange the data. right? So if you look at the, the landscape, uh, the US healthcare, the early adoption of electronic healthcare. So earlier it was a paper. Everything, when you go to the hospital and clinic, everything is captured in the paper format. So the early adoption of EHR and uh, EMR it started until 2000. And after that, the information technology came, and uh, they started interoperability platform. And, and now the recent days, we all focus on how to exchange the data using uh, different standards. Right, so <clears throat> the healthcare data transformation is started in 20th century paper. That's what I was mentioning. Paper based to electronic, and uh, and and the electronic health records came, and adoption of healthcare information systems. And now we are in the <clears throat> interoperability using a standard way of uh, how we can standardize the data to exchange the uh, exchange between the healthcare systems. So when you try to understand the healthcare data, uh, so we can say three types of data, structured data, unstructured data, and semi-structured data. So what I mean is, structured data is, uh, in a health system, so it's all well organized. Uh, it's very clear, uh, uh, starting from your demographic information, your clinical information, uh, or your visit information, everything is well organized in the systems. Uh, so that helps one way for the health system to exchange the data. But unstructured data is kind of a handwritten, you know, uh, the physician, they write something, and, uh, and we have to capture, and, 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 and it will not be like an organized way. And some of the systems has a semi-structured data. So what is the source of data? It's a electronic health records, claims data, and medical images, and clinical trials, and some of the patient uh, data. So the, how we are using the data in the, the industry, so one thing is the population health management and healthcare administration, and some of the clinical decision making, and some of them for the quality measures, and uh, some of them for the research and analytics. So we focus more on the population health management, right? And another important point to note is uh, the data privacy and security on when you are dealing with this data. And the interoperability will help us to exchange. And, and the data quality is a very important point to notice. So the, the healthcare uh, software vendors or players are trying to come up with a different integration strategy so how do we have data can be aggregated 
with the client's data, administrative data, you know, financial data, clinical data. And, and, and the challenge what we have is the uniqueness, right? How do you identify the <laughs> uniqueness of the member? So that is a still challenges. And how do we exchange the data within the standard? Like you have health, health level seven standard and uh, CCDA, and X2 is mainly for the, the financial transaction. And recently, uh, we all hear about the FIRE, which is a fast healthcare interoperability resources. And on top of this, the problem is the, the data legacy, the standard, what all the healthcare system has. So many of these uh, the systems, they have uh, proprietary files. Now that's a challenge. So they have their own file format, even though industry is adopting the interoperability standard, but still there is a challenge to exchange the data and using the latest technology like REST, SOAP, or XML, or JSON payloads. So how, what are the different type of transformation and exchange? So it could be provided to provider, or it could be payer to provider, or it could be provided to payer, and also the patient access exchanges, right? End of the day, the patient has to see the data, uh, how my uh, benefits looks like, so how many times I got visited the clinic, how many times I got hospitalized, right? How many visits I had this whole year, right? So what is the benefit of the data exchange between the healthcare systems? So, so if you look at the history of the, the healthcare systems, so everyone used the, their own way of uh, uh, capturing the data. So when you want to exchange the data, let's say if I go to uh, uh, hospital A, and if I want to refer to the, if, if my physician is referring to the hospital B, so the earlier days, the data has to be, I have to repeat the data from hospital A to hospital B. That's where the data exchange came. And, and uh, with, with help of this interoperability and the data exchange, it improved the care coordination between the physicians and patient, and also enhanced the patient engagement to make sure that the physician A is looking at this, the data when you start doing the, the, the follow-up treatment in the, in the next step, right? And also, it saves a lot of uh, efficiency and cost savings. So healthcare interoperability challenges. So that's what I was talking about the previous slides. Even though we have interoperability standards well-defined by health level seven, and we have X2L in US, uh, the EDA data exchanges, but uh, the standardization is lack, and security is a concern, and the data are siloed. So we have multiple uh, software vendors are developing, EMR, EHR, population health. You know, everybody has a different way of capturing the data. Even though the, the standard says you have to follow, but still is a challenge of uh, uh, maintaining the data. And some of the software vendors, even the hospitals or providers or payer, they are resistant to change the way how they do, right? And also the data quality and integrity. These are all the interoperability challenges what we are facing right now. And, and when you are trying to exchange the data between the systems, right, the main challenge is how do we get the data? So that's a problems area or we can talk about it, right? So when you are a software vendor, when you are building a systems uh, for the payer or the provider or the, or the patient engagement, so the data comes from multiple sources. So, so when you talk about the population health management, what we are trying to do is uh, from, from zero mega perspective, so <clears throat> we collect the data from multiple sources, right? It could be the member enrollment data or it could be their clinical data or it could be their financial data. So we collect all the data, and we try to use our own algorithm and trying to come up with outcome. So what is this member <coughs> has this, uh, the past history, present history, and how he is utilizing this, uh, the data, how he is utilizing this, uh, the, the coverage and benefit. So the, the problem with our client, are they, are, they give the data in the, the kind of a batch mode, uh, there are so millions of data they collect from multiple hospital systems or provider systems or clinical systems or EMR systems. So that is always a challenge for any vendor like us to <laughs> implement this kind of a platform. And also now the, the recent days or the real time is very important. So the earlier days, they give a data in the night time, right? So we load it in the batch, right? By the time when they come to uh, office next time, so they would like to see the data. But now the things are changed. So they don't want to wait, right? As a, as a member, as a patient, when I go to the hospital, when I'm seeing, when I'm meeting my physicians, as soon as he, he started treating my treatment, so they want to know uh, when I have a coverage with some other insurance company, whether it is going to cover or it is approved or not. So prior authorization is required or not. Now, the reason is the real-time interaction is, is more uh, asked from any of all the clients. So that's a, the, well, that's a problems 
uh, which I highlighted in the, in, the, in the red color, right? So this is still exists, both batch and uh, real time. Still, clients are using uh, the historical load, right? When you are moving one system to other systems, they use a batch mode and, and they load the data. So once they loaded the historical data, uh, then the delta load, and they want to integrate this data with any other their systems, they use real-time API. So that's a <coughs> different type of exchange mode. So uh, that, that's a problem statement, right? So even though we have a, the data comes from uh, different uh, 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 sources, hospital, clinic, laboratories, pharmacies, and insurance companies. So the interoperability and standardizations are kind of a problems, right? Even though we have standard, some of the system they use standard, some of the system they won't use standard. Somebody will say, so we, we support HL7, somebody will say we support X2L, well. somebody will say, no, we will send it through our proprietary format. So that's a challenge, uh, still it's going on, right? So how do you solve the problem? So we look at it, so we've been this, uh, this population health uh, 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 last 20 years, right? And we are trying to see what are the different options we have. Uh, uh, how do we get, so, so we are getting the data, so how do we use the data, and how we can integrate the data with the other systems, right? So that's where we, we started looking for a kind of integrated developer platform, uh, which will help our customers, our client, who can uh, use this data, and, and before they get into the production, or before they, get, they start using or integrating with their systems, so we need some kind of uh, API interactive mode, right, to look at the API specifications and API documentation, and they can try it out how this API specification looks like. So that's the time we were looking for a platform which will help us to uh, uh, the interactive uh, API. So that's what um, we have adopted this uh, WSO to Korea platform. I think it's been last one year we started working with them. Um, <clears throat> so that's where the need of uh, integrated development platform, it helps, it, it won't solve all the problem, but it helps some extent, right? You can, you can streamline the data, and you can collaborate, collaborate and communicate, and you can easily onboard some of the client, the developer community, before they get into the uh, actual production, and they can play around this data, and see the specification, and they can use sandbox on how the data looks like, right, before they load the uh, data, right? So that's a, a, a beauty of the Corio developer portal. It has the options of sandbox environment, and you have documentation SDK, and you have interactive API console, right? So we adopted this uh, WSO to Corio portal, and, uh, <coughs> and we were able to customize the UI. So the, if you see this, it looks like uh, it's not a Corio. So we are able to customize with our own team, and it is a Zio Mega uh, developer portal, and we can do more customization, but this is the way it looks like with Corio. And, uh, you can list out all the API, and you have a good widget, and, and you, can, you can put a tax, and, and we, can, we can customize whatever you want, and you can list out all the APIs here, and you can do the interactive, you know, the console kind of mode. You can, uh, you can pointing out your sandbox environment, and you can do all HTTP, HTTP calls, and you can try it out, and, and you can look at the documentation. Also, the SDK provides the, the different technology uh, uh, SDK is where they can integrate. Another advantage of Corio is it gives uh, the good analytics, the usage, right? So when we are uh, multiple clients uh, using and, and interacting with uh, your list of APIs, it gives the usage. So the traffic, how many APIs are uh, uh, errored out, you know, and, and uh, the error rate. There are many uh, usage report you can uh, take it from the Corio analytics platform, which will help the developer community, also the client, they can look at it, how many APIs are requested in a day, and particular time interval, uh, what is the uh, latency, right? So that helps to generate some of the report, and an advantage of Corio is you have a custom report you can generate. So that also we can share it to the client. So in a, in a week or in a month, how many uh, uh, API got rejected, how many APIs are successfully processed. So that gives a lot of uh, flexibility for anybody to use Korea portal to share the analytics to the client or internal, you know. So there are many advantages we have. So with that, uh, so what is the, the digital age 
so people are adopting the expense of interoperability standard and API-based ecosystem and patient-centric data exchanges and data privacy and security. And people are trying to adopt AI analytics and still have changes in, in scope and also the partnership and collaborations. So that's a, a case study which uh, we would like to share about uh, Corio in healthcare data transformation. So thank you. If any questions, I'm happy to answer.